Getting out of your comfort zone is important. This is a major theme of 2016's Yuri on Ice, as well as being the ethos that led to me watching it in the first place. See, I'm a fan of shonen. Most shows I watch carry the promise that I'm going to be able to watch someone get punched very hard, very slowly. But I think it does a body good to occasionally step away from the familiar and explore other genres, and this has inevitably led to me discovering some of my favourite series in recent years, and last season's Beautiful Boys Doing Things Well ice skating anime seemed like the perfect chance to do this once again. Telling the story of 23-year-old ice skater Yuri Katsuki, and the impact it has upon his life when his former hero and champion ice skater, Viktor Nikivarov, decides to become his trainer. The show had already garnered a lot of attention from an absolutely stellar trailer and some eerily beautiful character design, and it was with much anticipation the show began airing last October, where it was met with widespread acclaim, quickly gaining a massive following on social media, and even being one of those rare shows that seemed to appeal to anime and non-anime anime fans alike. The series certainly received a degree of backlash after so thoroughly sweeping the Crunchyroll awards, but I think when you look at it as being such a broad anime appealing to such a large and unusually untapped portion of the audience, it's not really that surprising. So one thing I want to get straight right off the bat here is that I consider my time with Yuri on Ice as a net positive. It's pretty rare I'll watch a show that's heavily based in romance and rarer still that I'll find one that really resonates with me, but watching Yuri and Victor's slowly developing relationship did just that. Apart from being goddamn exceptional looking in places, the series nailed several emotional high notes, and this is helped in no small part by the stellar direction of the infinitely cool Sayo Yamaoto. I think one of my favourite aspects of the show is you can really feel Yamaoto's genuine passion for figure skating come through. She's very clearly a woman who really cares about the sport, as you may be able to tell from her work on the Persona 5 intro or her animator expo short, Endless Night. She's also someone with a pretty incredible pedigree, having storyboarded on shows like Space Dandy, Samurai Champloo, and even Red Lion, as well as directing the gorgeous Michiko Tahachin and her previous show, Lupin the Third, The Woman Named Fujiko. And she even spent a period of time working under the late, great Satoshi Kon. A lot of her earlier career was spent working on opening and ending sequences. And I think this really shows in Yuri on Ice. She's exceptional at moving characters to music. And you can see this from the show's fantastic opening, and possibly even more so from some of the beautifully done ice skating sequences. And this is the first major area I felt the show really succeeds. It actually made me give a shit about professional figure skating, a sport that has, up until now, never occupied my consciousness for more than 9 continuous seconds. But the stronger sequences within the show do such an effective job of tying their characters' narratives to their performances, and the results can be really, genuinely emotionally moving. There's one particular sequence from the end of episode 4 that had me nearly teary-eyed, and the fact that I'm willing to reveal myself as such a massive weenie should show you how deserving I think the show is of such praise. It's in these early episodes where I felt the show was at its absolute strongest, to the point where I could feel it biting at the heels of my two other favourite shows from last year. The first four episodes in particular do a stellar job of setting up the story, as well as establishing our previously mentioned main character, Yuri Katsuki. Yuri is introduced as a character pretty much at the end of his career, and more depressingly, his life too. His childhood dog has died and his lifelong crush has married the kid who used to bully him. Possibly worst of all, he completely bombed in last year's Skaters Grand Prix. He's talented but suffers a tremendous amount of performance anxiety, and the show does a great job of illustrating exactly how detrimental this has been to his career, as well as how deep-rooted in his personality it is. Somewhat of a loner, Yuri spent a lot of his youth by himself at a friend's skating rink, which he used to escape from his troubles of day-to-day -day life. And I love this setup because it both justifies his current talents, while also explaining why he has so much trouble performing in front of other people. Ice skating is a very personal thing to Yuri, and not something that easily translates into an exhibition in front of a large audience, and his pride in what he does can make him overanalyze his moves and inevitably make mistakes because of it. 
It's only when our second major character of the show, Victor, sees a video of Yuri performing by himself that the former world champion recognizes within Yuri his actual potential, and so abandons his place from atop the world of professional figure skating in order to coach Yuri and try and bring out the very best of what Yuri could actually be. What I really think works about this dynamic is that all Victor is trying to do is move Yuri from a place where he logically analyzes his performances to one where he instead instinctually feels them. And this is actually an area I've been pretty fascinated with for some time. There's a really great book on the subject called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, which breaks down how our desire to do well at something is often detrimental to our actual execution of that very activity. And on a side note, if you draw, I'd really recommend this book. And this is the rigid cycle Victor is attempting to break Yuri out of, and contextualizing it like this makes Yuri's struggle all the more believable while laying the groundwork for the second major pillar of the show's story, the relationship between Yuri and Victor. While Yuri finds it difficult to express himself in front of an audience on the ice, he also has a degree of trouble doing the same with the people around him. And this has left him romantically inexperienced, which is an aspect that Victor picks up on and forces Yuri to confront by assigning him the task of skating to a composition centered around passion and sexual desire. And initially, Yuri isn't comfortable with performing such a piece, but slowly he grows into the role which directly parallels his willingness to open up to Victor, and the two plotlines hit a peak around episode 6, which is the first time he really nails the performance, as well as when the walls between him and Victor really start to come down, as they begin to grow more emotionally reliant on each other, leading to some pretty heart-wrenching scenes, in particular the car park scene from episode 7. The production was handled by Studio Mappa, the same guys that did the exceptional third season of Hajime no Ippo, and when the production hits, it really hits hard. The ice skating sequences are, of course, beautiful, but even a lot of the simpler animations are done with an energy and vigor that's distinct to Yamoto's style. Many scenes represent Yuri and the rest of the cast as impossibly beautiful man statues, while others will show them from a far more exaggerated and stylized angle, such as the delightful paper cutout explanation sequences, in which Yuri explains the ins and outs of figure skating. And these two styles work well, selling the heavier, more emotional moments of the show with a more serious look, while also keeping things light, fun and playful throughout. It's also worth mentioning that the background art is absolutely gorgeous, being highly rendered enough to convey a strong sense of atmosphere, while still stylized enough to have a distinctly handcrafted feel. One place I feel the visuals fall down, however, is that the ambition of Yuri on Ice's production can often outstrip its resources. While the show at its best looks simply unlike anything else, there's several sequences where it seems the desire to show off a lot of full body ice skating backed Studio Mappa into a corner. It's in these scenes you can really feel the animators struggle, with choppy frame counts and characters' bodies seeming to warp and take on bizarre proportions. And while I love when animators break character model in order to really push the expressiveness of a piece of animation, a lot of the instances of this felt unintentional. The strained production resources can also be seen in the amount of animation reuses from episode to episode. It's by no means a deal breaker, but it's hard not to notice it, especially on repeat viewings. There's also the odd ice skating sequence where the background panning is struggling to make spatial sense of where the ice skater is on screen, which means sometimes the skaters will appear to grow or shrink at random in accordance with the background. And maybe this stands out particularly to me because I've had to work on similar sequences in the past and they are very, very tricky. And I think the only real solution would be to build a proper 3D set and track the camera to the 3D character models the animation was based off, but that would be an expensive thing to implement and resources with any production are not infinite. Overall though, I think I'm far more willing to overlook an overly ambitious production as opposed to an incompetent one, and I think the high points of the series' visuals more than make up for its shortcomings. Narrative-wise, however, I think the show does run into some more serious issues. I think if you look at the two main schools of criticism for the show, you get two different groups of people. One asking what all this romance is doing in my sports anime, and the second asking what all this sport is doing muddying up my romance anime. And while I fall firmly in the latter category, to a point, I do understand this confusion. I felt the A-plot of Yuri from the first four episodes was very much the emotional, romantic connection between Yuri and Victor. But after that, the show switches gear, and we're introduced to roughly a dozen new characters, all of whom have their own skating sequences and own personal narratives. 
And usually I'm a fan of big casts like this, but I did feel that given the limited time the show has to air, it just got to the point where I was watching skating sequence after skating sequence and just waiting for them to end in order to get back to the story. And the time spent watching these sequences gets pretty excessive. Episode 6, for example, has nearly 11 minutes and 45 seconds of pure skating, over half its runtime. And this isn't helped by the fact that some of the supporting cast just aren't really that interesting. Interesting. It's also around this middle point in the series that my personal favourite character from the show began to take a back seat, and that was Yurio, the Russian ice skater and Yuri's main rival in the war for Victor's attention. Yuri has this constant, great, pissed off vibe about him, and his design so perfectly exemplifies this. His unwavering confidence and staggering natural ability contrasts so well with the Japanese Yuri, and this is why I find it such a shame that he features so heavily in the first three episodes, only to be treated as somewhat of an afterthought from episode 4 on. My final issue with the show, and possibly the one that bothered me the most throughout, is with the portrayal of Yuri and Victor's relationship. While the show is filled with moments between the two that work and work bloody well, there was always this ever so slight sense of ambiguity hanging over their relationship. Now don't get me wrong, I fully read the show as a romantic story between Yuri and Victor, and I think to suggest otherwise is kind of ludicrous. But when watching the show, it always felt like the series was doing everything in its power to play up the romantic nature of Yuri and Victor's relationship, while never really giving the two a genuinely romantic moment that's not first couched in the idea of ice skating or their relationship as coach and skater. There is the kiss scene from episode 7, but bafflingly it's shot and cut in a way that the actual kiss is only shown for the briefest glimpse, and strangely, it's obscured by Victor's arm. And I do totally see this moment as a kiss, here's a diagram proving it. But the fact that we need a diagram, or that there's any room for doubt at all, kind of bothered me. This should be a world-shattering moment in both characters' lives. So, why frame it like this? Why leave any ambiguity at all in possibly the story's most important moments? And oddly enough, after this moment, it's never acknowledged within the show's narrative. Victor and Yuri never talk about it, and neither does anyone else, and I just found that really strange. And this was an aspect of the show I was never really able to shake. There's a beautiful scene later on where the visuals suggest the couple's engagement, but the dialogue is only focused on their relationship of again being coach and students. And like, look, I'm not an idiot, I'd never suggest that this show is anything other than a romance story, and the creators have acknowledged as much, and even then, it's a subtext so razor thin that it's going to be obvious to literally anyone who views it. But I guess my point is, why is this being treated as subtext at all? But also, I do have to acknowledge that I am perhaps a little out of my depth here, having little to no experience in the history of Yaoi, BL, or Shonen Ai, and when I took to Twitter to get fans of the genre's opinion, the general consensus was that the ambiguity wasn't really a big deal. And so I totally accept there's a perspective I could be missing here, and also I'm aware that Yuri on Ice is far more upfront with its themes than many of its contemporaries. But also, I don't see what benefit it is to the story the show is trying to tell, or to its fans, by leaving any ambiguity at all in the driving force behind the series as a whole. I think if this aspect of the show was different, and it had a tighter focus on Yuri, Victor, and possibly Yurio, then what you'd be staring at right now would be a full-blown why you should watch, as opposed to a plain old review. But all that said, is this me telling you not to watch this show? No, absolutely not. Yes, I found parts of the show confusing and even frustrating, but this is a series about beautiful boys and ice skating, two things I have only the most passing of interest in. And yet still, it managed to claw its way past nearly every other show from last year to obtain my number three spot. And my gripes aside, I do think this is a fantastic piece of work that deserves to be watched and rewatched. And whatever comes next for the series itself or Yamoto as a director, I greatly look forward to finding out. Friends, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video and like this channel, why not head over to patreon.com slash super eyepatchwolf, where you can kick in a book or two to help keep this channel strong. 
and in doing so, you can see your name listed with these incredibly brave and aesthetically pleasing people right here. I'd also like to thank Twitter user at Akimaro for letting me use her artwork, who incidentally has a lot of great artwork over on her Twitter and Tumblr, I'd really advise checking them out. Link in the description below. As ever, you can catch me on Twitter at iPatchWolf or on the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast. Friends, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.